Today we're going over the latest Tesla news, including the shutdown of the Model 3 production line at Tesla's main factory, possible production updates for Giga Berlin, reports of Model S delays and more, so let's get into it. First up today we have some updates about Tesla's new custom 4680 battery cells. These are the battery cells they announced and talked about at Tesla's battery day that are much larger and come with a slew of performance, efficiency, and cost improvements. Plus, they look pretty cool on the assembly line. Tesla announced that they will be producing their own cells, but will keep working with suppliers. Not until recently has it become clear that Tesla meant other manufacturers would be making these same 4680 cells as well. When talking about this, Elon said, quote, the reason Tesla is doing its own cell production is in order to accelerate the growth. It is not to make less use of our cell suppliers. First, Panasonic announced that they would be producing Tesla's 4680 cells, and now it is reported that LG is officially building a new pilot production line for these cells at their factory in Korea. The report says, quote, LG Energy Solutions has recently begun to build a pilot production line for Tesla 4680 batteries. It is currently transforming some production lines in its Okchang plant, and the assembly and electroplating equipment have been installed. LG is likely to invest millions of dollars in the line, a figure comparable to rival Panasonic, which is also preparing pilot production for Tesla's Simino plant in Osaka, according to people familiar with the matter. LG aims to complete the pilot line before Panasonic starts mass production of batteries. This is big news because it is confirming what Elon has talked about, but also confirming that Tesla will not just be using suppliers for their old technologies. Tesla will be producing the 4680 cells at their Fremont factory, upcoming Giga Texas factory, and Giga Berlin factory. Additionally, Panasonic and now LG will be producing these same cells. There will always be startup time and delays for these to end up being produced at scale, but it looks good for Tesla's future cars and the possibility of their current vehicles to get these cells within the next couple years. Demand for these cells will only be accelerating, so even though they were talking about LG and Panasonic as rivals, it seems that Panasonic isn't as concerned. They are likely less concerned about LG because when they talked about Tesla building their own cells, they said, quote, there is no concern that Tesla will become a competitor, although Tesla is promoting in-house production of the battery. The upcoming Model S Plaid Plus is supposed to have the 4680 cells with a structural battery pack, along with the Cybertruck coming in 2022. Additionally, the Model Y coming from Berlin is supposed to have these, and very well could come earlier based on recent reports. At this point, this report is just a rumor, but the source has been accurate in the past and is being reported on Tesmanian. Reportedly, Tesla is moving forward with plans for transport containers to line up with their start of prototype production in Berlin starting in May. Full production is set to begin in July or August. If this was just another factory for Tesla, it wouldn't be as important that it comes online quickly, but Tesla hasn't been shipping Model Ys overseas. Instead, they have decided to wait for that Berlin factory to be constructed to build and ship Model Ys from there to the European market. Many European Model Y order holders and people who want to order a Model Y but have found it not to be available on the website will be very excited if full production truly begins in July or August of this year. This lines up with recent timeline updates on Tesla's website showing that the Model Y would come to Europe in mid-2021. Still, this factory only broke ground in June of 2020, so it comes as no surprise that many people think mid-2021 is too soon for this factory to be producing cars. Tesla did it in Shanghai, though, and progress of Giga Berlin construction has been coming along incredibly fast. In the best case scenario, Tesla could begin delivering Berlin-made Model Ys with their new structural battery pack and 4680 cells in July of this year. We know the battery supplies are coming from multiple sources now, and rumors show Tesla making the moves for a mid-2021 delivery. Next up is our biggest story for the day, which is that Tesla is stopping Model 3 production at their main Fremont factory for a period of time. The Model 3 has been Tesla's top selling car by far, so this is a big deal considering they make a lot of Model 3s per day. Tesla groups their production numbers together for the Model 3 and Model Y, but in Q4 of 2020, they announced that they produced 163,660 Model 3s and Ys. The last shutdown we saw from Tesla's factory was the Model S and X production line over the holidays. It remained shut down, and then they announced the refreshed Model S and X at their earnings call. This doesn't appear to be the situation at all for the Model 3 though. This shutdown appears to be due to an industry-wide microchip shortage and is something Tesla mentioned as a possibility earlier this month. In Tesla's 10K filing with the SEC, they said, quote, a global shortage of microchips has been reported since early 2021, and the impact to us is yet unknown. 
The unavailability of any component or supplier could result in production delays, idle manufacturing facilities, product design changes, and loss of access to important technology and tools for producing and supporting our products. Moreover, significant increases in our production, such as for Model 3 and Model Y, or product design changes by us have required or may in the future require us to procure additional components in a short amount of time. Well, the first constraints affecting Tesla have arrived. Staff on the Model 3 production line were told that it would be shut down from February 22nd until March 7th, but were not given any reasoning. Tesla just refreshed the Model 3 and is not expected to make any changes to that car, especially not right now at the start of the year, so this likely is the same semiconductor shortage affecting the entire industry. Semiconductors are necessary for many parts of smartphones and modern vehicles, but especially for safety sensors, brake systems, and driver assistance technology in modern cars. GM, Ford, Nissan, Toyota, Volkswagen, Subaru, Fiat, Chrysler, and now Tesla have all had to slow production due to a shortage of these chips. None of these companies can build their vehicles as designed without them. For example, Autopilot is a huge part of a Tesla, and without the chip supply, Tesla simply cannot build and ship their cars properly. These semiconductor constraints have led to an executive order by President Biden calling for a review of the semiconductor supply chain, saying, quote, This is about making sure the United States can meet every challenge we face in this new era. Pandemics, but also in defense, cybersecurity, climate change, and so much more. Interestingly, so far, Tesla has only been reported to shut down the Model 3 line, which could mean that the Model Y is more popular and they have enough inventory of the Model 3 for the near future. Likely, they are running low on chip supply and are having to decide which cars to make, and they appear to be choosing the Model Y, at least for the time being. We'll see how this plays out in the coming weeks, but the take from Wedbush analyst Dan Ives was that he is, quote, not overly concerned with the supply chain and factory disruption and won't change, quote, the overall delivery trajectory for Q1 and 2021. At market close, Tesla's stock was down about $60 or 8%, and that could be related to this latest news since any production delays could mean revenue interruptions. A leaked email from Elon Musk to employees shows that overall this shouldn't affect much, or at least that's what Elon is making it seem like. He said, quote, we are experiencing some parts supply issues, so took the opportunity to bring Fremont production down for a few days to do equipment upgrades and maintenance. Fremont production is back up and running as of yesterday and will spool up rapidly to full 3 Y production over the next several days. Model S and X production lines are almost done retooling and will be aiming for max production next quarter. There is high demand, so we will soon need to get back to two shifts for S slash X. Please recommend friends to recruiting. Thanks, Elon. Based on this email, it seems like Tesla is dealing with some issues, but taking the time to upgrade equipment, do maintenance, and get things right back on. Additionally, the mention of high demand for the Model S and X is great news for Tesla going forward. So all of these recent reports have said the Model 3 line is going to be shut down for two weeks, but Elon's email makes it seem like it is much shorter than that. But he did just tweet and said, quote, Fremont shut down for two days, parts shortages, and restarted yesterday. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's still a little bit of a longer process than he is mentioning to get back up and running, but it seems like this will basically not affect Tesla at all, and the fears of two weeks are not much. That said, Tesla is still pushing forward with the Model S and X refresh with the earliest delivery dates listed at three weeks for the Plaid Model S. This could change if these supply constraints continued, but the kilowatts just noticed a few production Model S's and X's at Tesla's logistics lot where they get cars ready for shipping. There have been prototypes spotted, but these appear to be actual production vehicles for delivery. What's interesting again is that all of them, and I mean all of them, have a rounded steering wheel. Tesla announced this refresh with the striking yoke steering wheel, but every single prototype model spotted, as well as these production models, includes a normal rounded steering wheel. Tesla has yet to even mention that a round steering wheel will even be an option, but apparently it will be. Here are a couple theories I have about the yoke versus round steering wheel. Number one, Tesla could be dealing with some supply constraints, as Elon mentioned, but for the yoke steering wheel, separate from the semiconductor constraints. Sawyer Merritt tweeted some rumors about the Tesla Model 3 line shutting down before it was officially reported by Bloomberg and others. In that same thread, he said, quote, there are rumors going around that the new S slash X are facing some production issues. My first theory is that the yoke steering wheel is not being supplied and that they need to go forward and make these cars anyway, so they are making them with the round wheel. I know many customers love the yoke steering wheel, but would buy the car anyway with a normal wheel. If it were the other way around, I've seen plenty of customers say that the yoke steering wheel is a deal breaker. 
Maybe Tesla is going to ship the round wheel to start due to production issues, but that also brings me to my second theory, which involves the NHTSA or NHTSA. NHTSA has yet to confirm if the yoke steering wheel is actually legal in the United States, the place where these cars are being made, and where the first batch will undoubtedly be delivered. The most recent word from NHTSA was, quote, at this time, NHTSA cannot determine if the steering wheel meets federal motor vehicle safety standards. We will be reaching out to the automaker for more information. Even if there's a 90% chance that this wheel is legal in the US, there is really no reason for Tesla to begin production with a steering wheel that has a small chance of being illegal. That would be a large waste, so it appears that Tesla will make this an option regardless of the legality. Even though they haven't mentioned it, it seems that their plan is that before delivery, you'll be able to choose between a yoke or a normal wheel. For now, maybe they are only producing the strictly legal option, and once they get approved, they will begin producing the yoke steering wheel. I think this is the most likely scenario, but supply constraints could be involved as well. Now, if you follow Elon Musk on Twitter, you know that he is all about Dogecoin. He appears to love something about it and clearly wants it to succeed. With his large influence and 48 million followers on Twitter, however, everything he does can affect things greatly. We've seen this with various stocks before, the SEC has gotten involved, and now the SEC reportedly wants to investigate Elon once again for his Dogecoin tweets. The original SEC issue was over Elon's tweets in 2018 saying, quote, am considering taking Tesla private at $420, funding secured. This ended up being settled with Tesla and Elon paying $20 million fines, and Elon stepping down from his role as chairman of the board. Lately, there are tons of tweets the SEC could potentially want to investigate involving Dogecoin. Most recently, he posted a photo of a dog on the moon, putting in a Doge flag. He tweeted, quote, Dojo for Doge, and said, quote, if major Dogecoin holders sell most of their coins, it will get my full support. Too much concentration is the only real issue in my opinion. I will literally pay actual money if they just void their accounts. These are just the most recent in a long string of tweets related to Dogecoin, and Elon has been talking a lot about it as the currency has grown a lot in value. An SEC investigation is a serious matter, but this is a literal meme currency, so I really don't think that they'll find that Elon is secretly trying to drive up the price and make himself some money. Elon's response to a tweet about the investigation was, quote, I hope they do. It would be awesome with a couple laughing emojis. Good old Elon Musk, what would you do without him? Last up today, just a couple pieces of news regarding Tesla's competitors. Lucid Motors is a very compelling company that has repeatedly said they have better technology than Tesla. With Peter Rawlinson at the helm, many people have faith in this company, but they are still launching with a vehicle that is higher priced and truly competing in the luxury market. It will be competing with the Model S and has a very expensive lineup. In a recent article posted by Reuters, Rawlinson said that they plan to make a car that will rival the Model 3 in 2024 or 2025. It appears that Lucid is following a similar path to Tesla in that they will make an expensive vehicle first, scale that up, make some money, and then get working on the cheaper models. The interesting thing that people are always pointing out is that Lucid is planning to launch their Lucid Air this year and will be on par with the current Model S, but their Model 3 competitor is still three to four years out, meaning that Tesla will have improved the Model 3 over the course of those years and possibly launch their even cheaper $25,000 Tesla by the time it comes to be. I'm still rooting for any electric car company, but the most recent news from Lucid is some unfortunate delays. Deliveries of the Lucid Air were scheduled for this spring, but now they have been pushed out to the second half of 2021. Hopefully the Lucid Air truly launches later this year because what they have announced regarding technology looks very promising. We'll see what happens there, but there's another compelling EV that was just announced, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. The Ioniq 5 was announced a few days ago and appears to have taken at least a little bit of inspiration from the Cybertruck, at least in these render photos. These photos make the car look very futuristic, but when you see the photos of one in the wild, it looks more like a normal vehicle. That's not a bad thing, but it's something to point out between concept and production. The Ioniq 5 is a smaller crossover hatchback that is supposed to launch Hyundai's Ioniq brand of upcoming EVs. This is the first announced, includes fast charging speeds, and should have ranges up to 290 miles. It overall takes a lot of inspiration from Tesla and modern EVs with screens and more of a minimal interior, and should come in around $45,000, although official pricing has not been announced. 
Tesla is absolutely fulfilling their mission here, and I'm very excited to see many more compelling electric vehicles come to market in the near future. Ranges are getting better, prices are getting better, and hopefully charging infrastructure can continue to grow so that any EV can make any road trip without issue. Right now, Tesla has kind of cornered the market in that area with their supercharger network. Lots of exciting things going on, and I'll be sure to keep you posted on the latest involving Tesla's Model 3 production, stopping for the time being. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about the latest information about some changes to the Model Y being tested by Tesla, you can check out my video linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.